What I'd like to do is explore the history of philosophy and see what we can learn about how to, how should we think about this question about whether or not God exists. Okay, well, that's a good question. <laughs> and I'm going to give you a kind of maverick answer. That's why I came to yeah. you. So from Plato and Aristotle on, there have been some views about the supreme being, the good in Plato, which was eternal, and the, the, the prime mover in Aristotle. And then in the Middle Ages, there were still, there was always trying to figure out the properties of the supreme being, and one of the most important properties, namely existence, yeah. and whether being the supreme being, he didn't have to have existence, this <laughs> famous ontological argument. Yeah. All of that was getting nowhere over a thousand years mm -hmm. of nowhere when my hero comes on the scene, Pascal. Pascal is a very religious person and a brilliant mathematician and a super good philosopher. And he says the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is not the God of the philosophers. So all this debate about the supreme being that Plato and Aristotle and the medieval mm -hmm. supposed Christians is just irrelevant to us yeah. Judeo-Christians. Mm -hmm. But that's only half of it. He still does think there you ought to be able to say something about God. He decided that there was something special about God in the tradition of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Their God was a present. God, a God that the mind could contemplate. Mm. And Pascal said, our God is a hidden God. He's never present. You can't see him. The, the Jewish thing, you can't make pictures of him. And that's important. If you don't understand that, you don't understand this whole tradition that's been off the rails because the point is you can prove the existence of God and you can prove the non-existence of God. That's what they've been doing, yeah, yeah. but they haven't realized that that shows that God's not available for that kind of understanding, mm. that the very important feature of God was that God was not present, couldn't be present, couldn't be represented at all. And that gets you to Kierkegaard, who, leaning on Pascal, makes a big deal about the difference between what he calls metaphysical religions, religions who think that you can uh, have a vision of God, for instance, the way Dante does at the end of the Divine Comedy. And that's a kind of religion, but it's got nothing to do with Judeo-Christian religion. None of the Jews ever got this kind of vision right, of God. Right, right. He's, the best they got was a burning bush yeah. and so forth. And it turns out it's very important. They could see Jesus, the Christians, and in some sense, Jesus was God. But Kierkegaard says, once Jesus is here, there is no access to God the Father. We don't know anything about, we don't need to know anything about, we couldn't know anything about anything behind Jesus, which was the, a, a supreme being. Even though Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen, seen the God Father. Father. Good, that's Kierkegaard's line. Yeah. Because since he says that, there's nothing more to see. Yeah. You know all you need, you'll ever get to know about it, it, so stop debating it. <laughs> and you've got enough. Well, Jesus, what more do you want? You've got Jesus. <laughs> So they're really just two totally different religions, Kierkegaard says. <laughs> Metaphysical religion, which somehow mistakenly thinks it's Judeo-Christian, and the Judeo-Christian God and that religion. The next really important step is Nietzsche, who wants to say certainly the God of the philosophers isn't uh, anything we can know anything about or need to know anything mm -hmm. about, but that God in general no longer plays, it even plays any important role in our culture, and he expresses that by saying God is dead and we have killed him. We, we have killed him by presumably partly sort of misunderstanding him and doing philosophy about him, <laughs> and partly by becoming, he says, so good at understanding people's desires that they, and, and being honest about our desires that we discover how much we need God but that we haven't any evidence and therefore we have no right to believe in him anymore. And that's the end of what Nietzsche calls monotonotheism, <laughs> uh, which he thought was a bad idea from the start.